Country singer Morgan Wallen is speaking out for the first time since he was caught on camera earlier this year using a racial slur, an incident that has highly impacted the 28-year-old's career. Wallen sat down with Good Morning America's Michael Strahan to discuss the night cameras captured him saying the N-word. Take a listen. What made you think that the word was ever appropriate to use? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, think I, I think I was just ignorant about it. I don't think I sat down and was like, hey, is this right or is this wrong? And do you know the history of the word? Oh, yeah. I've heard some stories in the, in the initial conversations that I had after that, just how, just how some people are you know, treated even still today. And I'm just like, I haven't seen that with my eyes, that pain or that, or that insignificant feeling or whatever it is that, that it makes you feel. Wallen added that while he used the word playfully, he understands just how ignorant his words were. Shortly after the video was made public back in February, Wallen's music was pulled from country radio, removed from streaming platforms, and he was banned from multiple award shows, both within country and outside the genre. Now, during the interview, Morgan also addresses what happened behind closed doors following the incident. First, he says he spoke with BMAC, the Black Music Action Coalition, as well as black men in the music industry, such as record executives, excuse me, and artists like B.B. Winans. Secondly, Wallen, who has a one-year-old son, also checked himself into a rehab in San Diego, California for 30 days. Now, when discussing rehab, he says he was trying to figure out why he was, quote, acting this way. When he says this way, he seemingly is referring to numerous problematic events leading up to the racial slur incident, like an arrest back in May of 2020 for public intoxication and disorderly conduct. Plus, later that year, if you remember, Wallen was pulled from Saturday Night Live after videos surfaced of him partying without a mask just days before the show, which broke SNL's COVID protocols. He was later rebooked and ended up appearing in an episode in December. And this is what he told ET just one month later in January about what he's learned from those actions. I don't know. I, I, I got to be careful of who I keep around me. I think I've learned a, a lot of things from from a couple experiences, but I think it's more of making sure I'm around people I trust. You know, I, I'm I'm real I'm real outgoing, especially you know when I do start drinking. I'll, I'll just I like everybody, you know, for the most part, and then it just it can get a little a little muddy because yeah. no, everybody doesn't have your best interests at heart. And I think it took me a second to realize that, but that's definitely something I've learned. Yeah. Uh, Again, that interview took place just one month prior to the racial slur incident. And despite all the backlash he received following that night in February, Wallen's sales increased significantly. In fact, Rolling Stones lists his latest album, Dangerous, which was released in January, as the biggest album of 2021 so far, with nearly 250,000 album sales and over 2 billion streams. Wallen did tell Strahan that he and his team took the additional money from spiked album sales, which he said amounted to half a million dollars, mm -hmm. and donated it to civil rights organizations, including BMAC, uh, but that has yet to be confirmed. So I feel like the biggest question here is what is next mm -hmm. for Morgan Wallen? We do know he has been laying very low as far as it goes for public appearances. He has no upcoming scheduled events, but... Will that change? Right. If so, when? And when it does, how will he be perceived? He did tell Strahan that I'm not ever going to make you, you know, everyone happy. I can only come tell my truth, and that's all I know to do. Mm. So, Denny, I mean, my question to you is, especially knowing how much his music still has succeeded despite his actions and his words, right. Where does he go from here? Do you think that he will be accepted as if everything is back to normal? I have to say that, yes, that's exactly mm -hmm. what's going to happen based on the record sales and the fact that, honestly, his music career has bare... I mean, his music sales, I should say, have not mm -hmm. taken a dip following this. So I'm, that's all to say that I actually think Morgan is putting in the work that he mm -hmm. promised he was going to do, uh, and, he, and he's doing right in my book. I'm more concerned about the audience the country music audience, you know, that's mm -hmm. still listening to, listening to his music because as we've seen, it's really hard sometimes to separate the person from their music. We've seen right. it time and time again with Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. Chris Brown, but even those two examples right there, those are artists of color. And I think collectively people are like, you know, I'm, not, I'm gonna take a break or I'm gonna cancel them or I'm gonna stop listening to their music altogether. That hasn't happened with Morgan and I don't think that's a reflection of him and what he did. It's more of a reflection of who's listening to his music and that's oh, my concern. Yeah. And this incident, you know, helped 
open eyes to the problem that right. is within the country music industry being very exclusive to the black community, women, uh, the LGBTQ community. There's a lot of underlying issues that still need to be right. addressed. Um, but I do think the numbers prove, I do think that he will continue to sell out shows, people yeah. will go to listen to his music. Um, and that's I, out of I, his control, don't you think? Th yes, and I, I do think that there are people though who, you know, won't be able to separate the music from the person. And you know what, that's rightfully, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's okay because yeah, what he did right. was wrong, right. exactly. But you know, you mentioned he is putting in the work and that's the one thing from the interview that they didn't cover though that I wish they did yeah. is, what he's doing now. We know he went to rehab, but are, is he still sober? How is that affecting mm. his life? And just kind of that aspect of what's next, but time will tell. And we'll of course keep you guys updated on this story over at etonline.com.